Hello. This paper was my input at the Oxford Philosophical Society's annual Members' Day in June 2008. The theme for the day was, Why Should We Be Good? And my end of it was the biological aspect. So the paper is called, The Foundations of Moral Feelings from a Biological Perspective. Here goes. In the next 20 minutes, I will try to shift your worldview. The only person who ever said that to me succeeded. Mind you, that was Amartya Sen, Nobel Prize winner, talking on Radio 4 about the causes of famine. Maybe I shouldn't be so hopeful, but I will be disappointed if by the end I haven't caused, if not apoplexy, and at least mild philosophical irritation. Why should we be good? Well, what do I mean when we say that something or some experience or some behaviour is good? I believe what we mean is that we approve of it. The word good is an expostulation, an adjective we use to describe a thing or a deed or an experience which arouses in us a feeling we like. I had a good rest. I did some good work, etc. Things which actually stand in contradiction can both be described as good. So thinking about feelings provides an appropriate starting point in moral theorizing. This is not a new idea. In the opening sentence of a theory of moral sentiments, Adam Smith says, that the happiness of others is necessary even to the most selfish of us. Though we derive nothing from it except the pleasure of seeing it. And David Hume famously opines that reason is only the slave of the passions. Do you remember Dan, the druggist on the corner? He was never mean and ordinary. He was swell. He killed his mother-in-law and ground her up real well. Sprinkle just a bit of for each banana. What a reprobate. But why do we say so? Did Dan act basely because he failed to increase the sum of human happiness? Or because he didn't act by a maxim he was prepared to universalize? Or because he disobeyed God's commandment? Or because he'll be a less virtuous person as a result of what he's done? No. Dan's act is wicked because we all feel it to be wicked. And so should he have done in our strong opinion. It's part of our nature to have such moral feelings. Dan's is what William Gass calls a clear case. The sort of case in which we build our moral theories, not the sort of case to be arbitrated by our moral theory. Our moral feelings are primary. I won't argue that our feelings represent the sum total of morality, but they certainly play a central role. We have impulses to seek happiness, including the happiness of others, impulses to be generous, impulses to empathize, impulses to be fair, impulses to explore the world. These impulses either are our feelings or they are accompanied by our feelings. My claim is that this is our nature, our acculturated biology. It is a fact about the world. But if it's right, shouldn't we expect to find evidence of moral behaviour or sensibility in other species? Why should Homo sapiens, having come through a common evolutionary process, expect to be unique in such an important character? I think we can find such evidence. <laughs>